Right, so question five. A student... Um, let me just get... There we go. A student is researching information on nuclear reactors. The following diagram is found on a website. It illustrates a type of reaction that takes place in a reactor. Okay, and you should see that on your screen. What type of nuclear reaction is shown in the diagram? Right, well, it's clearly got something going into a big nucleus and then breaking up into smaller nuclei. So you should know that immediately as a fission. Let's see, that comes up nicely. Oh, there we go. Yep, a fission reaction. Okay. Now, for two, it's asking us to um, label P, Q, R, and S. So P, we should note, is a neutron. Q is our uranium nucleus, which we should all know that it's uranium that is used in nuclear fission. R is a neutron because it releases neutrons which can then start a chain reaction. And S is actually what we call daughter nuclei. Or daughter nucleus. Okay? That's your four different ones there. All right, so that answers um, the second part of A. B asks... Name the part of the reactor whose function is to prevent release of radiation beyond the reactor. Now, we should know that from even our nuclear models that we did, that the thing that should be around the core is a containment vessel. Okay? Containment vessel. For C, disposal of some types of radioactive waste from nuclear reactors is particularly difficult. Give a reason for this difficulty? Well, one of the main reasons for um, difficulty with radioactive waste is it's highly radioactive for long periods of time. Of time. This then means it needs to be stored securely. Okay, now that's one of the big issues with radioactive waste, but again, that's in your booklet, so make sure you know these things. And the last question in this little section is D. And let me just move down for D. It says, electricity can be generated using fossil fuels or nuclear fuel. State one advantage of using nuclear fuel and one of the big ones you should know about nuclear fuel is nuclear fuel releases large amounts of energy for small um, for small fuel amount of fuel. Okay. So a small bit of uranium can release a lot of energy. Right, that is this question done. That's question five done. Now, let's see what question six has to offer. And then that's us done. Okay? And we'll see how far we can get with this. Right, question six. Sputnik 1 is the first man-made satellite, and it was launched in 1957. It orbited the Earth at a speed of 8,300 meters per second and had a mass of 84 kilograms. Sputnik 1 orbited Earth in 100 minutes. Calculate the distance it travelled in this time. Okay, so again, a good question that is involving distance speed time. And this time we don't need to change anything because it's asking us for the distance. Now, the speed for this is just what it mentioned in the beginning, and it said 8,300 for its speed. And its time was 100 minutes to orbit the Earth. Now, we know that minutes needs to be in seconds, so 100 times 60 will give us that in seconds. And that gives us 4.98 times 10 to the 7 metres. Okay, 
That gives us that answer. Excellent. B says Sputnik 1 transmitted radio signals a distance of 800 kilometers to the surface of Earth. Calculate the time taken for the signals to reach the Earth's surface. Okay, so calculate the time. So this time, using our little triangle and our D and our V and our T, we know that T equals D divided by V. So let's just do that. T equals D divided by V. The distance this time is 800,000 because we know that kilometers is times 10 to the 3. And we know that we're using this radio signal. Radio is an EM wave, and they all have the same speed, which is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8. So if we do that, we get 2.67 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. Always putting your answers in scientific notation when you can. Right, moving on to C. For C, it's saying define the term gravitational field strength. Well, gravitational field strength is simply just the force per unit mass. Or look, G equals W over M. So force per unit mass. These equations are here to help you. Nice and easy answer there. Remember it, and it will serve you well. Right, two. For this one, it's asking what is the value of the gravitational field strength at a height of 800 kilometers. Now, looking at the graph, we can see that at 800 kilometers, we go all the way up to the line, and we then go across. And you should be careful with the axes and the labels, but each um, box is representing 0.2. So we see that this one should be 7.8 newtons per kilogram, which we've got there. And then the last one is asking us to calculate the weight of Sputnik 1 at this height. So weight is an equation we again should know, and it's W equals mg, nice and easy, where the mass is 84, and you've just found out the gravitational field strength that you'd want to use, and that's 7.8. And that times that is 6. 5.2 Newtons. There we go, have it. All three to four questions um, sorted, and hopefully that has helped you a little bit with everything that um, you may have had questions on or were stuck with. So, third years, all the best, stay safe, and we will see you next time.